Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me thank members. I know the member for Viewfort North will speak on the other resolution. And he'll, I'm sorry if I, if you saw my light first, but the member for Viewfort North will speak on the other resolution. Mr. Speaker, you know, when you, when you run a country, Mr. Speaker, you have to decide what you take on or what you do not take on. And the member for Youth South always used to tell us that in my youthful exuberance sometimes when I, when I thought we should go after everything and TMT and things so. And he, and he always used to say, let these things go because you have, you have to concentrate on running the country, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I have not come back and read letters and show emails and show documents that the member for, for Miku South got involved in. But Mr. Speaker, today I'm going to do something to show you how the member for Miku South deliberately and intentionally seeks to mislead the people of St. Lucia. In his failure to understand that he has been rejected and he calls the, the seat of Sir John Compton to be lost because of his ineptitude and because of his ineptitude and because of the caliber of candidate we run against Kigain Uniasa. He must cover his shame by coming in this honorable house and jest and talk loud and go in public and say, I'm a St. Lucian. Look at me. I'm born in St. Lucia. I'm a St. Lucian. When your passport say you're born in Matnik and cover up all the things he has done to the people of St. Lucia and cover up the fact that he left St. Lucia after COVID with the sixth highest rate of depression in the world. Higher than any other OECS country because of his mismanagement of the economy. He comes and he reads things that he knows are not true. He knows that. He had an extract from a social economic review talking about the CSO and the Central Citizens Office, Mr. Speaker. Something we have debated in this house. Yep. Mr. Speaker, the member for Vifat South, when we got documents from civil servants, always said to us that these are the facts as seen by the civil servants. Do not interfere with them. We never, I have never asked to see a copy of the social economic review before it goes into public. That's not my style. I don't do that. I don't call civil servants and tell them, I mean, Mr. Speaker, he opened the door about CIP and what are you going to see? I mean, Mr. Speaker, but Mr. Speaker, I'm going to tell you what they did, you see IP money. But I'd kept myself concentrated, keeping focus, Mr. Speaker. But today, I'm going to deal with the issue you spoke about training students for work in the hospitality industry, Mr. Speaker. And I'm going to show you how this hypocrisy and these lies put him where he is today. And he comes here, and he says all this, and when you answer him, some service on that side say, oh, concentrate on the thing, leave, leave the man alone, leave the man alone. Every day on United Park, they lie. Every day on some radio stations, they lie. Every day on some WhatsApp groups, they lie. Every day, Mr. Speaker, and you mustn't answer. When you answer, they tell you, concentrate on what you're doing and leave the, and leave the man alone, Mr. Speaker. But today, Mr. Speaker, 
I'm going to read for you part of the mess the member for Microsoft left this country where he talks about training students in hospitality, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I not like to do it, but I'll do it. I will do it, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, listen to what the member for Mikusov, when he was in government, part of the things he left for St. Lucia, his legacy. You talk about training, Mr. Speaker. There was an agreement, or there was a discussion, and I'm not, and I think it's something that we may have started, I'm not sure. I'm not going to go, go down that way. But I know we were speaking to Monroe College also, but I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to categorically say it was something started. The way from Viewfort South may be able to, to tell me. I'm not sure. But what I can tell you that, Mr. Speaker, is that The Minister of Finance, Mr. Speaker, after making an agreement with Monroe College in 2018, the member from Microsoft, the member from Microsoft, when he was Minister of Finance, he was Minister of Finance from 2016 to 2021. Our payment for providing this program to 128 students who began in autumn 2019, the bank has not released the $384,000 due to Monroe, which reflects the government's guarantee towards program costs. Until that payment is received, we are unable to confirm the completion certificates for this cohort, which delays their ability to gain employment in the hospitality sector they trained so hard to join. I said, I refer again, again for you, Mr. Speaker. This is the member from, 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 from Miku South, you know, yes. coming and <coughs> solely, Mr. Speaker. This program to the students who began in autumn 2019, the bank has not released the $384,000, 3,000 by 120 students due to Monroe, which reflects the government's guarantee towards program costs. Until that payment is received, we are unable to confirm the completion certificates for this cohort which delays their ability to gain employment in the hospitality sector they trained so hard to join. Fuller, go and follow me, Mr. Speaker. In January 2024, 20, January 24, 2023, when this member of Minister of Finance, here is how I had to deal with that. I write as directed by the Prime Minister to acknowledge your missive dated October 27, 2022, regarding discussions for payment by the government of St. Lucia of the outstanding balance due to Monroe College for hospitality training for more than 100 young St. Lucians. I wish to confirm the Prime Minister's commitment 
that the government of St. Lucia will settle, will honor its obligation to settle the amount of $429,000 in that regard, in keeping with the understanding of making payments over an agreed period of time with an initial payment of Eastern Caribbean $100,000 will be paid during the fourth quarter of the 2020-2020 financial year ending March 20, 2023. <coughs> so speaker, that is the history. So the 100 students he's speaking about. <laughs> He didn't pay for them, Mr. Speaker. But, and the minister, the minister has made a point about calls and call centers and things. Let's talk about working in the cruising, in the cruising industry, Mr. Speaker. We guarantee that member for, for, for you what's up, you say your memory better than mine. That's right. You may, you may try to correct me, or you may try to clarify it. We were the ones who went into agreement with the cruise industry and some so, private, se private service providers, yeah, Mumpa, Mumpa yeah. right, and others, to put cruise, to put solutions to employment in the cruise industry. And I think, no SLDB, and, right, and we guaranteed a little SLDB of $3,000 so they could get per, per applicant, per applicant of $3,000 per applicant so they could get the necessary requirements to, to go on the cruise to go work in a cruise ship. Stop. And we, we used to joke Stop. with him in, 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 in cabinet and say, when the time come to vote, all of you will be on cruise ship. <laughs> we, used to, we used to have that, 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 that joke, Mr. Speaker. And when he came, he stopped it. And he went into that agreement, and he, and he ended up not paying the people for that agreement, Mr. Speaker. That is his record. That's his record, Mr. Speaker. He stopped it, and he ended up not paying the people, Mr. Speaker. So, that's his record. That's his record, Mr. Speaker. And as I promised the last time I was there, from now on, Mr. Speaker, from now on, we are going, because, you know, he always comes and he threatens us. And he has told, he has told my colleague, Deputy Prime Minister, show it, where you have it, where you have it, Mr. Speaker. Because he wants, because he believes that because of his propaganda machine, he can get away with that moment, Mr. Speaker. But from now on, we, Whilst remaining focused, Mr. Speaker, we have to debunk these lies and these misconceptions. Second, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> second, second, Mr. Speaker. The member for B for South talks about old buildings, 80 old buildings, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want you to ask the member for where are you from? Miku South. Then I thought he was from Canada. I want to ask him, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask him, Mr. Speaker, where in the box was there any place for the kitchen? Where in the box was there any place for the laundry? Where in the box was there any place for the offices? Where in the box was the mug? Where in the box was the warehouses? Where in the box was the space for these things, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, they intended to use the same buildings to add to the, the box, Mr. Speaker. The hospital could not function without using the buildings in phase one, Mr. Speaker. Exactly. And to make it worse, Mr. Speaker, they destroyed two buildings costing between seven and nine million dollars for no reason at all, Mr. Speaker. But I'm happy to tell you, much to the chagrin, because what they want, they want bad for St. Lucia. They want St. Lucia to suffer because St. Lucia voted against them. They want us to suffer. So they hopefully, and they're praying every day, Lord, give us more crime. They're praying every day, Lord, Lord, make the roads get worse. They're praying every day, Lord, make the hospital happen. They're praying every day for damnation to fall upon the people of St. Lucia because of their sins, Mr. Speaker. But I want to tell you something. Mr. Speaker, the dialysis ward and the field of therapy ward, ward are going to be completed this year. 
They are going to be competed this year, Mr. Speaker. This year, they're going to be competed. And Mr. Speaker, work on the other buildings will continue later this year, Mr. Speaker. That's what they don't want to see, Mr. Speaker. They pray for doom and gloom to befall the people of St. Lucia. This, the member from Miku South says, we have no plan for education. This is a government of education. We were the ones who got university primary school education. And many people in this room would never know what it meant to go on a shift system. And when you talk about, and we talk about youth entrepreneurship, many young people will never know what it meant to go to school from 8 to 12. And part of the reason why we may have problems in this country is because of these children who only spent a few hours in school, Mr. Speaker, and spend the rest of the time unsupervised. This got the left party is the one who changed that with the construction of the Dim Pullet Louisi School. We are the ones, Mr. Speaker. You may know that. Going to school half day. You went to school half day, Mr. Speaker? No. You, you're probably too old for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure. There are many people in this room who know nothing about going to school half day. Nothing, Mr. Speaker. We were the ones, Mr. Speaker, when there was something called common entrance. When liquor, Mr. Speaker, you know when I went to college, only about a hundred of us could have gone. Further, after my time, Mr. Speaker, there was a time, and the member for, for, for Cassius North can testify to that. The rush and the pressure it was to get to college, get a secondary school. That's why they had to build the Semdes Academy and the other school for that. Because of the pressure, there's no space, Mr. Speaker. He knows that, but he doesn't know that. He wasn't there. For that, Mr. Speaker, do you know there was something called common interest, Mr. Speaker? When little children between the ages 11, 12, the children used to be under stress, nervousness. The parents used to beat them and tell them, you, because they did not get, they said they failed to go to, to secondary school. Not a stress on this children, Mr. Speaker. Then they move it to have a something called a junior secondary school to take on that cohort. There was the Rock Hall Senior School, Mr. Speaker. And, that, and something, something beautiful is going to happen up there soon. That, that will make them more vex. <coughs> there was the Rock House Senior Secondary School, that's what they call it. Senior Primary School. When we, the Labour Party, going to government, we started something called, we built five new schools and started universal secondary school education where every child got a, got some, a place in a secondary school. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect, but every child at least had a place in school, Mr. Speaker. Mom, Mr. Speaker, he even gets that. Say so we have no plan for education, because probably young people who do not know that. Don't be the middle of this, Mr. More talk. We were the ones, Mr. Speaker. We are the ones now. And we're beginning this program of one university, or one university graduate per household. We are the ones who do it. So, Mr. Speaker, when you had this, this member comes there and with his bluster and, and, his, and, his, and his sounding good, speaking at level of, of untruth, Mr. Speaker, we have to debunk it, Mr. Speaker. We have to debunk it, Mr. Speaker. Talking about hotel workers, Mr. Speaker, I've heard the member for Cash Yourself speak endlessly on remuneration for hotel workers. We were the ones, Mr. Speaker, when you go into government, we remove taxes on service charge paid to hotel workers. We were the ones who did it. We were the ones who did it, Mr. Speaker. So our record, Mr. Speaker, is clear. Our record on workers and education has not been perfect. Nothing is perfect. But our record is clear, Mr. Speaker. And finally, on this statistics thing, he comes he brings back again every year, Mr. Speaker. It is clear, it is clear what happened where that is concerned, Mr. Speaker. That was not written by us. We don't get involved in, in, in that writing. It's the same way they want me to get involved in police operations. I never get involved in police operations, no matter what they say. And no matter how they try to attack me, to criticize me, because they believe that being a policeman is not 
a profession that you must be proud of. That's what they believe. So when they say, I say my father was a policeman, trying to denigrate me, Mr. Speaker, what they are doing is they, they, they are denigrating all policemen in the system. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. So when they try to attack me, when I say my father was a, was a policeman, Mr. Speaker, they are attacking all policemen because being a policeman is an honorable profession, Mr. Speaker, and I'm proud to say that I went to school on policeman salary. I'm proud to say that. I'm very, and I'll say it again. And the more they attack me, the more I'll say it, Mr. Speaker. And a teacher. And a teacher. So, Mr. Speaker, we go, let's get back to the thing about, and I want to read, Mr. Speaker, the explanation that we have about the statistics, Mr. Speaker. I want to read it for you. <clears throat> During COVID-19, the Central Statistics Office made a decision to continue the conduct of the quarterly labor force survey. Notwithstanding the fact, on the advice of the chief medical officer, all face-to-face -face issue interviews should have been discontinued until further notification. Consequently, adaptations had to be made to the data collection methodology and as such, the results of the labor force survey during that survey, during that period, will stand alone and not comparable to the labor force survey results prior to COVID. However, from 2023, we resume the application of the normal labor force data collection methodology. Hence, the 2023 labor force survey results can be compared with the results prior to COVID-19. That's the explanation, that's the explanation, Mr. Speaker. Not for me. Because even though I did a little, a little bit of statistics in school, that was a long time ago, I had a plan to be a mini statistician. I don't plan a statistician. That's what they want me to do. Plan everything, that's what he did. He was an engineer. He said he had a mixed degree. <coughs> then he was all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. All kinds of things. He's an economist. He's a financier. He's a hotelier. He's a what is again? He's a guru in everything. You know about everything, Mr. Speaker. I don't know about everything, and I'll never say I know about everything. I don't know about everything, Mr. Speaker. But what I know is I can listen to advice, and I can listen to people who know more than me. Many people who know more than me, and look to do the best for the people of Solution. So, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Mr. Speaker, this resolution will help in the school shortages in the OECS, Mr. Speaker. Data from the World Bank shows, Mr. Speaker, that 40% of all employers in St. Lucia indicated that skills and education of workers was a hindrance to the country's competitiveness. 61% of youth in the OECS face challenges getting or earning a living, with many reporting that other that their academic qualifications did not fit the labor market. That's what that's the figure say, Mr. Speaker. And that is what this resolution and this borrowing seeks to cure. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.